You're listening to Truly Unruly with Marcus and Jessica Trufant. Hey, we're back with a new episode of Truly Unruly, and this is wild, everybody, because this just sprung upon me. I'm <laughs> thinking the Trufants are going to be home because the kids have started school and all these wonderful things and activities that the children have going on. No. You know what these Negroes decide to do? They go to Hawaii. They just got back from the DR, but they go to Hawaii. I have no idea why they're in, why they're in Hawaii, what they're doing in Hawaii, if they got flued out. Got flued what, what, out. <laughs> I just felt like saying that. What's the <laughs> scoop? What's going on, you guys? What's popping? And Jess looks like she's about to go do a jazzercise. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> we kicking it. We kicking it tough. Hey, Cal. Man. We don't know how we're in Hawaii either. We, do we really know. don't know. It was pretty uh, last minute, and we had to call on the troops, the friends, everybody to help us so we could get down here to actually celebrate his brother's birthday. Shout out to Young Dez. Shout out to Young Dez. Yeah. Or and not so Young Dez no more. I know old ass Dez. Yeah. He's okay, because I was I was I was about to say I was like I was like I don't like finding out that the people <laughs> that I do I work for leaves town on Instagram like, I, like and I'm not even on Instagram I got to go yeah. on the, the the show's page I go on the show page and it's like we're off and they're cheers at everybody in like first class with their cups <laughs> just going, cheers at everybody I just talking to these the guys sky. yesterday and right like, yeah what and then Marcus is like oh hey by the way. <laughs> We brought all the equipment with us, so we're good to record, but we're in Hawaii. And I'm just we're like, making oh, it happen, right. man. If you could see what this set looks like, it's pretty. Uh, it's, it's pretty legit. He did a good ass job. It's pretty blasphemous. Got the iron and our, board our, and hey. extension cords. We made it work. Bro. Iron and board coming through the vans. Tennis shoes are coming through for a stand. Like, come <laughs> on. Truly unruly by any means necessary. You feel me? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But that's cool, though. You guys are down there celebrating your brother's birthday. It's all yeah. love. You're mm -hmm. playing golf tomorrow, Marcus, you said? Yeah, man. Playing golf tomorrow. So um, I brought my clubs this time. When we right. went to the Dominican, I didn't bring my clubs. I had rental clubs. That definitely was not a uh, few good days of golf, but I'm going to try to try to Woo, get it in this time. So golf. me and Dad will probably be betting, so I had to bring my goodies with me so I could show up. There you up. go. So, hey, you yeah. better win. I know. <laughs> And Jess, are you guys are you, are you ladies win. doing like a girls' day tomorrow? Since they're gonna be playing golf, you guys got like spa lined up, or what's what do you guys got popping? Um, well, nothing that exciting. I rented two chairs outside, <laughs> two chairs pool. that have covers at the, the pool. pool. That's something. so we can because actually it was kind of overcast but warm, and when the sun came out. It was like it Marcus and I were passing a towel back and forth. We were sweating bullets out there. So mm. it'll be nice to have a little cover. So that's what that's what we're doing. I'm here to relax. This, this is dope because this is the first time you guys have been back to Hawaii since what? Uh, the incident Almost two years. With, yeah, two years with, uh, was it the, the binder? The COVID for binder. For my birthday, right? The COVID yeah. binder. Yeah, for Marcus's yeah. birthday. The binder when we was fighting people over chairs and stuff. Yeah. yeah and music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It got That's a little cool. rough out here. It did. I was in the heart of COVID, if I remember It correctly. was in the heart of COVID. Yeah. We had yeah. to like, yeah. 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 Um, what, what, what I want to chat with you guys about, because I don't really have any notes, but I was on the golf course <laughs> and a buddy of mine was telling me about his newly teenage daughter and he suspects that she's now finally interested in dating. He was like, you guys talk about that on the podcast. I was like, well, we've talked about the sex talk before, but I was like, but I don't think we've necessarily like dug into dating. He's mm -hmm. like, yeah, like he's like, I don't really even know how to have this conversation with her or if my wife and I should have it together. He's like, because you, as a parent, and he's black, he's like, but as a parent, you know, black folks, you, you know, he's like, we think our whole lives, like, we know exactly what we're going to say when our kids start dating, and we're going to tell them our daughters how these dudes are, and we're going to tell our our sons how these girls are, but then he's just like, I just, I just froze, and I don't know how to have this discussion with her without making it seem awkward for the both of us. So... You guys, as parents with teenage daughters, I don't know if your daughters are dating, but what would be a good or what would be some advice you guys would give to try to, I guess, approach your teenager about 
now entering this new weird space in life, I guess. First of all, why is it such a weird space? Why is it so awkward? You're, he, your friend is acting like his daughter was like, hey, I want to fuck this dude. <laughs> and so that could be an option. Though. That is that's, that. Here, here it yeah. is. That's um, an option, dating. Option I think parents. that's much easier to navigate than, but than sex, even though neither one should be difficult to navigate because it's a part of life and it's just, it's how you find your mate and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, it's, it's calm down. Maybe it's a guy yeah. thing. Maybe it's a, he doesn't know cause it's his daughter. So he's like, Whoa, that's what I think it is. What do I say? Right. Um, I think, I think that's exactly what I think. And it's, he's a dad. So it's like, you have that protective part of you as yes. a father where you're just like, eh, I don't want, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, how do I try to be more of the modern parent and try to have just a, a conversation without it? And you know, mm -hmm. I'm laughing because, and also being that it's a dad it's a dude. <laughs> it's another guy. And your daughter's like, I want to date. And he's probably going, well, when I was doing that and the wheels are turning and That's what fine. he probably all, may have. All again. that is fair conversation. But all you do have to have the conversation. I think when it comes to this subject, especially with daughter, well, I don't even think it matters. It could be boys or girls, but kids in most situations, early teens, they don't know what they're doing, right? When it comes to these relationships, sometimes they don't know what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like, whether they've seen it on TikTok or they've seen it in a Disney movie or they heard about it from their friends, what they think it's supposed to look like. So information, I think, is key. Yeah, it's going to be weird. Yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable. But to have a realistic conversation of what a relationship should look like, boundaries, if you do go the sex route, how do we have a safe, healthy relationship? And I think that's where you start. Right. And well, you know what starts having like kind of dating and a relationship and your expectations. It is it's it's modeled at home, really, especially, you know, in a two parent situation or whatever. Um, it's modeled at home. So his daughter is probably already seen how mommy and daddy are and how daddy treats mommy and all that kind of stuff. And I think it sets a precedent before they even start dating, you know? Um, right. Cause hello, I never saw my parents do that. So why the hell would I take that or whatever from some random dude or girl? But to that, Jess, you have to talk about peer pressures, right? You still have to talk about Pressure all of that. from your, your, um, from your boyfriend or girlfriend, what that looks like. Guys, of course, are going to try. Well, and not of course, but in a lot of situations, pressure girls to do certain things. Girls may pressure boys to do certain things. So what um, you should have your foundation that you stand on as a person, as our child. So we're going to tell you exactly what this is supposed to look like, what this is supposed to right. feel like. Um, and yeah, just start there. That foundation, that foundation of information and just not throw them to the world and kind of let them learn on their own. Even though you they don't want do them to learn on their own. You do not want to them to learn on their own. Not like that. I not know. something like that. Something that can, you know, but they do have to figure out a little bit of it on their own. You don't want to be a helicopter parent. Of course, when it comes to these relationships, no. they have to learn and find their own space or where they want to be. But information again, it, it's right. Cute. Right. It takes both parents talking to the child. Right. I think both can talk to them. They can talk together and then follow up separately and, you know, give a little bit um, more detail or advice or something like that. Uh, but honesty too. honesty. Well, of, yeah. yeah. Of things we used to do, even though it could be rated R or it could be rated X, but just being honest and not. Damn. Rated X? What the fuck? <laughs> not keeping them in the dark is what I'm trying to say. And not put ourselves Rated on X. the pedestal so they Damn. don't feel... They, may feel they, they might feel like they're defeated or something. Like if something goes wrong in their relationship or if they're treated this way or if they treat somebody this way. Let's be honest about everything and just put everything out there. And again, for the third time, information, information, information. Yes. Do you 
tell them that, hey, just so you know, there might be or there probably will be a time in your life where your heart's going to get broken. Do you have that conversation also? Because yes. I've watched with like cousins of mine and I have sisters that like, you know, that first breakup and it's like, mm, oh, my mm, God. Mm, mm. And I'm like, I'm like, you're 14. You thought you were going to marry him, you know? <laughs> Well, here's one thing that I think the first breakup, well, you start off, you're going to have, you can have many boyfriend, many loves in your life. You can have that throughout your lifetime, just finding one person and, you know, that's the end all be all. That's not, that's, that's rare, right? So you're going to have many loves in your life. You're going to feel like your heart has been ripped. and But you know what? You can say all these things, but a teenager, because they are not mature, it's still going to go. It'll always be in the back of their brain, but <laughs> they're going to come undone the first time they experience heartache. But your words that you will feel like you're, you know, your life is over. Your life is ending. There's no one else in the world. There is somebody. There are a million, well, not a million, but that that's not the end Could all be. be all. You just have to really kind of drill that home. There is always something better. You're young, you're young. And um, yes, the guy or the girl w was a loser anyway. <laughs> to go with that, I think we have to be careful of making our kids is jaded the right word or yeah, it could be being jaded. like, okay, I'm in this relationship, but I'm not really in it type of thing in fear or being like, okay, I'm only 14. So I don't want to invest too much of myself in that. I think we got to be aware of that, even though that we want to give them all of the do's and don'ts and want them to have all the knowledge that we have. But just like you said, Jess, they're not mature enough to really understand that you got to meet them exactly where they're at. So I think what it is for that breakup or when that heartbreak comes, parents just be there to support, not the being like, I told you so, or don't oh, worry no. about it because you're young and yeah. you got all this stuff going on. Right. Just be there to support. And of course, they're 14, 12, 13, 14, 15, but in their life and the way they feel, and this is the end of the world. It's right? the end of the world. But we got to be there to support and let them know it's plenty fish in the sea but i can tell you something and i don't know if this is just my theory if i maybe am right but i remember my first real heartache and i was torn apart crying i remember my mom was like rubbing my head and i'm just oh my life is over i was one of those kids but a Disney movie. One of the reasons why my life was so over was because I was sleeping with the boy. And I think that as a kid, that just adds another layer when you don't even know how to handle your own emotions and you bring in something like that. I think that's when you see kids boys and girls really tore up behind somebody because you you know you might be dating somebody and really really like them and um y'all break up and you know you're like upset but you're like you know what anyways but when you involve intimacy I think for a kid it becomes very difficult to detach from that person um I don't know. That just might be mine. And I have a couple of people that I know who have experienced that and their daughter's sheer heartache was because they were intimately involved with their dude. Question, Jess. Question, question. So do you think that might have been different if your parents would have came to you and kind of let you know about being intimate with young men and kind of where their heads oh, at yeah. and kind of what they're going through. And that's what I'm talking about. The oh, yeah, it would have been totally different. Yeah. Talk to your daughters. Totally Talk different. to your sons. Okay, yeah, you might be having sex, but 
that doesn't mean that you guys are married, right? I know we have different things that come into play, talk about religion and this and that and what you're supposed to be doing, it says the world. But if you're having sex, and in most cases when you talk about boys, boys are, are just trying to get it in at times, though. And I know, it's, of course, there's <laughs> girls that are like that too, but we have to have these conversations. And me as a dad, I need to have that conversation with my daughter. If you're going to be having sex with this boy, don't expect him to – change he's still a young man still trying to figure it out yep. so that's what i talk about that's when i'm talking be- about information yep. that's the real that is the real do not try to change you guys it ain't gonna happen you're not gonna change this dude this dude most likely you guys aren't gonna get married you know that kind of thing don't uh yeah do not expect that but taking it back a couple of steps because we jumped right into sex Um, to dating, one of the things that I did tell Carmen, because she did, I don't know, I don't, our daughters don't date. I don't know if it's like going to a Christian school, just they're really kind of in a bubble. They got time. They got time. I have no idea. You're trying to put them out there now. I had boyfriends in like fourth grade. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Super, you was fast. No, I was not fast. (laughs) I was not jokes, fast. I had, jokes, I had a jokes. little boy give me this little. Now, I went to all white elementary school, right? But I dated the three black boys that were there. And <laughs> seriously. And one all of three? them. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> right. All three. All three. Fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. It's four of them. I dated all of them. I, there was a handful of them I dated. I pretty much dated them all. Anyways. So in the third grade, this guy, he shall remain nameless, um, he gave me a ring (laughs) and I brought it home and I showed to my mom, see it? My dad almost, (sighs) did he almost shoot everybody in the house over this? Something like that. And I had to give the ring back. To the boy. It, it wasn't a diamond. I don't even know where he... He probably stole it from his mom, right? Damn. Out of her costume jewelry. And... But yeah, no, I was getting... I was getting rings in the fourth grade from boys. But back to my point. I digress. I was telling Carmen, you don't ever do anything or let a boy do anything that you do not want to do. If you do not want to be touched, you make that clear. You set the boundaries. Because, you know, boys and girls, they can be a little like, just kind of seeing how far they can get, the touching, the kid. Do not do it unless you are okay with it, ready. Because some girls and boys are not ready to even hold a hand or have a boy reach out and touch them. Right? Don't touch me until I'm ready. And I said, if you're ready and you want him to hold your hand, you want him to touch your arm, you want him to kiss you, that is okay. Because it doesn't make sense to say, don't, 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 because they're going to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it anyway. Um, but just kind of put the ball in their court. Right. It is. Uh, it is. You have control of this. And before we jump off, Kale, I don't know if you're going to jump um, to another question. And we jumped, of course, we jumped right into the sex. Right. Yeah. But when you talk about dating and you talk about being in a relationship and I'm only going to speak from a boy's point of view or from a young man's point of view, you want to communicate these things or how to treat a woman. Um, you want to be able to open doors. You want to treat a girl nice. You want to do these things that they can learn and they can grow into being a responsible man to have a real relationship. All this social media, all this crazy stuff, all this foolishness they see on a daily basis, you have to combat that with real life conversation and real life experience. So it's not just about the sex, but it's about how to treat somebody and how you feel like you should be treated as well. I want to be able to feel good. I don't want somebody talking down to me. I don't need somebody screaming at it. I don't want nobody hitting me. All those type of things it come into that conversation. Yep. You there, Kel? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Oh, you thought I was frozen? <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty cool. You're pretty cool. Yeah, he I'm was locked in. The- <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to go back to your earlier point, Marcus, 
about um, getting the message across of, you know, make sure that you might not want to take the relationship too seriously at a young age because you know this isn't the person that you're going to be with forever. Well, since they can approach it that way, like, you wouldn't want them to go into it that way since they're not mature enough. Just don't take it seriously because you know you're not mature enough, they're not mature enough, and this gives you a time and a window to just learn about people and just learn about yourself so you do figure out, like, there are these kind of people in the world, these are those kind of people. I know that sounds, like, very responsible, but I guess, like, from experience, and now we're all grown adults, and you look back, I'm like, well, damn, what would I would have done in my first relationship different? Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's whatever. fair, Kale. I think that's fair to not take it too serious. And what I was trying to say earlier is that you don't want to set kids up for failure, right? Because what you practice is what you become. Okay, I'm not going to take this relationship serious. And I know I'm only 12 or 13, but I still might practice that. You know, I get to my 20s and I'm kind of going through that same thing. So I said, it's kind of like a gray area and you kind of got a total line, but you do want to be able to protect your kids from getting too deep and being hurt and at the same time though just like in Jess's situation you learn from those situations and you grow from that and it only helps if you have the support of your parents um well we have we have been groomed to be in relationships that is kind of what we're here for right to find your love have kids this magical thing whatever whatever and you do I kind of am in the middle. You don't care. I agree. You shouldn't take it too seriously. But at the same time, you don't want to go around like, fuck it, fuck it. Because you can end up hurting the other person. Right. And you don't have to, to be that way. In but a relationship. And you said we're groomed. We are I- groomed to be be looking, constantly looking for our mates. Starting from a young age. That's like girls when we play Barbie that's and wedding. That's human nature, though. I don't right. think that's right. That's where we come Not in. groomed. It's hu- it as is, parents. It is it's human nature, human, but like, we're also... You find you somebody that makes you happy. You see it on TV. You see it everywhere. It's like, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. This is, on you know, on social media everywhere. This is what you do. And so that's where it is. There will be many. You can have many loves in your life. And sometimes they're just there for a lesson. Um, You know, not necessarily to be. I don't think you should be pressing upon your kids to settle down with the first person they meet. Because that's strange. Because yeah. there are so many other I don't, people in this world that um, you could be missing out. I agree, Jess. You shouldn't be telling them to settle down and, um, and get married and look to have kids at 13. But I think well, what parents could be doing or should be doing is coaching through that process, right? It's not about the settling down, but what are you learning through this? How is your young boyfriend or girlfriend treating you? How are you treating them? What are the boundaries in the relationship? Can we talk through what sex looks like and all that kind of stuff? So it's not so much about settling down, but it's about uh, learning as these situations come about. And the kids, of course, they are going to be weird about it and they don't think they got all the answers, but they don't. And asking, like you said, you got to coach them through it and continually check in and ask questions. It's like Carmen, when she actually does start dating and I see that this guy is sticking around, he's, they're hanging out, they're trying to, I'll start to ask more questions. So what is this geared towards? Are you having deep feelings for him? Are you having sexual feelings for like stuff that we really need to talk about? Mm -hmm. Are you guys thinking about having sex? Because if so, right, we probably should have that. Let's have another conversation. Parents should have that conversation even before kids. Well, you have it before. Right. Yeah. And then you have it. That's you keep coaching and checking in. You've got to ask. All they're going to do is lie. You've got to ask questions. But if you set the foundation right to our like we have with our kids, even though we're not just walking around like, yeah, sex, 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 sex all day. (laughs) They. They know that babies, well, I'm just saying, um, they know that babies don't come from storks. Um, They know that they are definitely not dropped down from heaven, fully formed into your stomach, right? 
what? <laughs> so once they already know these things, it's just a lot easier to kind of transition when they start dating, just going, hey, trying to have sex with your dude? Like, all right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about that's when you can have the conversations about birth control and all that kind of stuff. And people are wondering why so many young girls and stuff have to have abortions, which they're trying to take away. Because we don't fucking talk about sex, dumb fucking dumbs. And all of these poor boys and girls are just un in misinformed, uninformed, and are doing all of these things. And they have to end up driving out of Texas to a different fucking state to get an abortion. What? Um, no, that's facts. Uh, so should you just be like super blunt? Cause like, I feel like I'm the parent mm -hmm. that's going to be like, Hey, you should be very particular and be very picky with who you want to do this with because you don't want to just be another body. Right? Yep. Life is blunt. Shit. Life yep. slaps you in your face. Even as a kid in a relationship, life will, it'll slap you in your face. So I feel like you have to be, keep it, keep it very real. You cannot sugarcoat something that is serious because dating is serious. Right. I think so. When you start putting yourself out there and getting your possible, your feelings and possibly your body involved, it's serious. You can't sugarcoat that shit. I would say that everybody has their own style though. So each parent... Um, kids are different. So some kids will tune out if you approach them a certain way. So I think you do have to be blunt, but I think you have to be careful. You got to meet the kid where they're at. You got to meet them on their level. I agree. But at the same time, you don't, we're not going to use, I don't know. What, what, what is that? Oh, I can't remember it. Synonyms to the, it's, it's a, Pictures it's, and graphs. No, and yeah, it's something <laughs> where you're using, you're tap dancing around the real word. And it actually does more harm than help. Cannot remember the term. But. Synonyms? No. Well, synonym, well, kind of. But no. The thorus uh, words. Thesaurus? Yeah. So, thesaurus. No, yeah. it's a full Damn. on term. Can't like remember what it's called. Somebody yeah. knows. I know it. Somebody's Damn. like, girl, it's that. But anyways. Yeah, you do want to meet the kids where they're at, but you absolutely do not want to say babies come from a stork type thing. Right. Agreed. Because the kid might be uncomfortable. Agreed. No, that's not where the kid's going to be from. uncomfortable regardless. In most situations, the parent's going to be uncomfortable, but the parent is the parent. So they need to take that uncomfortableness and just and come with it. Yeah. I think kids nowadays with the overexposure that I think most kids that are like 11, maybe even 10 and older know where the, where babies come from. I mean, they showed the, I remember when I was in school, they showed the miracle of life. I watched the miracle <laughs> of life in third grade, second or third grade. And it was, it was, it was completely like, it was the stupidest thing ever because it's a bunch of little immature kids and we're just, cracking up laughing break it down for me kale the miracle of life i don't know if they what show you ever watch the miracle of life when you're in elementary school and they show the woman delivering a baby and they show the whole thing oh Actual, yeah like yeah. the crowning we of the kid that. and all that we yeah saw, they we show, to... and it's from like the 70s so it's like bush and like just very like like s curl huh the, 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 yeah oh yeah the music like the whole thing was like it was like debbie does dallas but like wow. a woman like delivering a baby and, I, and then we like see, we saw something like or okay. was that when i took lamar trust me jess it was like probably Lamaze? miracle of life that's what everybody watched and then they showed like what an erection looks like and the whole thing, and I, I will never forget this one dude in my class. I'm not going to say his name, but he goes, he's just laughing so hard. He goes, look at it. It looks like a sausage. And we're just like, <laughs> these, are, these are just immature little kids. kids. Yeah. It's a big thing. Yeah. but we're, we're okay. I don't know if they're still doing the miracle of life, but at Christian schools, there is no miracle. The miracle, there is no, there is no miracle of life. You did not have sex. That did not happen. The baby came yeah, from. That was that Catholic school, Jess? That was that St. Paul. Where did the baby like, come from? The baby came from. Oh, oh okay. That was All like, right, cool. yeah, that was at St. Paul. And so, like, 
So there's that. So, and that was like before social media and the internet. And like all we had was like softcore porn on the Spice channel. And you had to make sure that fuzzy, like it, it get it get clean for a second. And then it'd go back being fuzzy. And like the public access porn. Like that's what, oh, got, that's what kids had access to growing up. Like. Anyone in the, everyone in Vermont in the, in the fucking nineties remember that. So I now with that. these kids li- literally having soft core porn on their fingertips on social media, yeah. on TikTok and right. Instagram, yeah. I feel like most kids ten and over know where babies come from. Like, yep. Well, hopeful. I hope so because I'm tired of kids not knowing where babies come from and not knowing that if you don't want a baby and you do this that a baby may come. <laughs> so <laughs> the unfortunate part about the soft porn, Kale and Jess, that we're talking about on social media. I don't is know about soft porn. The skewed view of how you get there, right? Yeah, they may know where it comes from, but when you're talking about these relationships, what does a healthy relationship look like to get from, okay, sex to the baby? What does that look and feel like? And that's where the disconnect is. Yeah, you have the over-sexualization. Yes, I got that one right. I took my time with that one. Um, to get to the baby, right? But Over-sexualization to get to a baby. Or from the social media side of thing, right? Oh. Or what it looks like. Um, of course, you have sex. We're doing all these TikTok dances. Everybody's sexy and all this kind of stuff. Okay. A boy and a girl have sex to have a baby. But what's a healthy relationship look like are you doing tiktok dances all day are you screaming at your boyfriend or girlfriend is it disrespect do you have to buy them cars and all this kind of different stuff do you have to get to the bag or i mean is it healthy basic love right and that's why we're here because you're right with the soft porn and it's right at your fingers and the tiktoks and all that kind of stuff you are definitely overexposed to it but you still don't really know what it is you You know know you don't understand it you can see it you can as a matter of fact that's when you get your misinformation because you think it's this because you've seen it a million times on social media on tv but guess what it's not that and there are real life feelings emotions uh we had that episode stis uh Mm. 16 and pregnant, uh, mm-hmm. there's there's all of those that are all in between all that nice stuff that you scroll through. There's so, predators. Yes, there's predators. Sexual predators. There's, older uh, guys, older women. It's all these boundaries pedophiles, that we have to talk about. Cougars. Right? That, yeah. It come with putting yourself out there, getting in these relationships, because everybody's <laughs> not for you. Some people are scandalous, so you got to beware. I like all the nicknames. Cougars, predators, yeah. <laughs> all these Pumas. things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I'm saying, like, you could just open up the Explore page on your IG, and there'll be a post that shows that says, oh, such and such has an alleged, alleged sex take. Go to my bio and click the link in the bio if you want to watch it. Yeah. I don't Ooh, know. All of a sudden, you're on a porn, you're all of a, sudden on a porn server, and you're watching. I don't watching. know what kind of Instagram you have. I'm, I'm, but I'm saying like, but it's I'm about kidding. like rappers and shit like that. <laughs> right. And you, you know, know the sex I tapes mean, are glorified like, these days. Yeah, people um, glorify the fuck out of the sex tape. Why now. can't like, I be a Kim Kardashian? Why can't exactly. I misinformation get find a dumbass Ray J and then I reap me and my entire family reap all of the benefits and now my dude has to sing poorly to get likes and shit. I mean, he do got the new headphones though. Bit of Raycon oh, the or the Ray, Raycons? The Raycon? the, yeah, I got to get those. I got my earbuds, but I'm about to support black. Oh, no. Oh, no. Have you seen that commercial? Sorry, Ray J. Have you seen that commercial? I wonder when he I got that deal it. after he sang So Fucked Up on the verses. If I had one yeah. <laughs> And then he gets a deal for earphones. <laughs> I don't want your earphones. Jesus. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I would me? get some. I'm going to go get me some. So. Yeah, I'm going to wear them next show. And it was it was so low budget, the commercial. It looks like it's just a white background, like he was photoshopped in. And and it's playing <laughs> his music in the background. Sexy, can I? And he's like, what? I'm oh, not hating Oh, that. let me put I my, it. It, let me take my earbud business. out. Something like that. It's so corny. Raycons. So anyways, 
Hey, listen, let Ray get his money. I'd rather him do that than do performances in people's living room. He didn't get no, <laughs> I, he didn't benefit from that. Oh, no. What? Are you talking about Kim? Nah, when oh. he did, when he uh, when he was singing in Floyd Mayweather's uh, oh no uh, living room playing the piano. Yikes. Remember when Fabulous made fun of him about that? He goes, Ray J, stop doing lot, stop doing shows in Ray's living room or in Floyd's living Damn. room. No, I that's did tough. not. But that is yeah. remember th that's when he got mad and went off about the booty goons on the radio. <laughs> The, you remember that? The, I, I remember hearing about that. <laughs> I do. Ray's not alive. Did you a, talk about I that? I did, yeah. Ray J is not a live uh, performer. So, um, Ray J is not but a we still support performer you. in general. I support him, so I'm not mad at it. Leave that to anywho, Brandy. Anywho, um, I think this was a great episode, you guys. You gave some great knowledge. I will pass it off to my guy on the golf course and say, bro, here's the link. Watch the episode. Yep. You'll figure it out now. Information, Yo, so, information, yep, about information. About soft porn, about real porn. Doing it before you're ready, like all sex those tapes, things. cougars, pumas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey, I'm gonna let you guys get back to your 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 trip. Enjoy yourselves in Hawaii. This is truly unruly with Marks and Jessica Trufant. They're on the island. Check out these guys. Follow them on IG. You can probably see what's going on on their trip also. So just follow Marcus underscore Trufant. Jessica underscore Trufant. Of course, the page. Truly Unruly oh, underscore whoa. podcast. And, of course, you can listen to us on your favorite podcasting platform. And if you want to catch the visual, of course, check us out on YouTube. Remember, like, subscribe, leave a review. Watch us every Sunday on Converge. All right, y'all. We out. Have fun. Be safe. Love.